Welcome back. I want to wrap up our discussion of ethics so far. Um, we have been going through this outline and the way we've been pursuing knowledge is through knowledge of the good is through first talking about reason and reason grasping meaning. We had a conversation about reason early on and we said meaning is more basic than truth and truth is of ultimate reality. We talked about metaphysics and what is real. Then we went from truth to knowledge. We had a conversation about what knowledge is. Knowledge is justified true belief where justification is giving reasons for what we believe is true and those reasons could be strong justification or weak justification and in philosophy we want strong justification. And then we wanted to go from knowledge of basic things about uh, God, human nature, good and evil, to understanding and connecting the dots, uh, sunesis, seeing the big picture. And then from there, we wanted to talk about wisdom, applications of the good. And we talked about the moral law in that context. 10 universal moral principles. And we talked about the good and ultimate reality. We talked about thinking is presuppositional. We talked about integrity, work, authority, human dignity, fidelity and marriage. We talked about value and talent, truth and justice. And recently we talked about suffering. There are many applications of those moral principles. What I want to wrap things up discussing are ways in which we can organize our own lives in pursuit of the good. Uh, we want to restore wisdom. So we, we want the wisdom of the ages. And early on we talked about how the wisdom of the ages hasn't been passed on to us. Maybe in part, but not completely. And we want to gain wisdom and pass it on to those in the future. So how could we do that? So if you look at the outline, um, I've got some suggestions here for ordering your life for pursuit of the good. How do I, a student in philosophy, order my life? So we could talk about some of the things that are practical, sort of practical virtues that we can put into place. And the first one I have listed here is ordering the soul and the virtues. So Plato said our soul is like a chariot. Remember your soul is a chariot? And the driver of the chariot is reason. And we have two horses. And the horses are your appetites or what your desires and uh, your active part of you, the spirited part of you or your will. And reason has to keep those in check. Now, I don't know if we want to divide the soul. We said intellect, emotion, and will, and reason leads us. Um, so I don't know if we want to divide the soul the way that Plato does, but I do think uh, there is a truth to ordering your soul. Reason is to rule our emotions and our will. And if we do that, then I think we'll have a healthier soul. And we should care for our soul. Um, the second point I have listed here is eros. So you know, I didn't mention the virtues. Let me back up a moment. Wisdom is the virtue that rules your reason. Courage is the virtue that rules your uh, will or the spirited part of us, the active aspect of us. And uh, temperance is the virtue that rules our desires. So there is a reality to ordering our soul and checking our appetites, checking our desire to just rush into things. Even reason needs a virtue because we could rationalize rather than actually using reason. So uh, order the soul, care for the soul. I have the next thing, Eros. Eros is uh, that passion, 
passion for the good. So we should cultivate a passion for the good. Now it says Eros and beauty and the good. Plato, I think in the symposium and also in the Republic, uses an analogy for our desire for beauty as a picture for our desire for the good. So he talks about uh, wasting our arrows or our passion on merely pleasure or pursuing sexual desire. And uh, he says, look, these things in life are good, but they should point us to the good. So beauty in the world, not just people, beautiful people, but beauty, all kinds of beauty. Look around, there's beauty everywhere in nature, in animals, in people, in what we produce. Beauty in the world should direct our attention to the beauty of reality and ultimate reality. So Eros is that passion for knowing the good and enjoying the good. And that's connected to beauty and beauty should point us to the good. So Eros is uh, passion, desire, connected to desire and desire should be for the good. So order your desires, order your soul, order your desires. Now for students, um, I would ask you, advise you to th sit down and think about this. How do you find your talent in pursuit of the good? Do you know what your talent is? Have you thought about this? What are you interested in? What are you good in? Start with these big broad categories, the philosophical, the psychological, and the practical. The philosophical, are you an ideas person? Are you interested in the intellectual life? Uh, you may be, and that's not always encouraged in our culture. If you are, I say go for it. Surround yourself with people who could mentor you and guide you in the intellectual life. But perhaps you're more into uh, arts, um, beauty, people, relationships. That's the psychological. And perhaps you should surround yourself with mentors who can guide you in how to develop your talents in the psychological realm in pursuit of the good. And maybe you're into practical applications. So maybe hands-on things, technology, science, making, doing. Surround yourself with mentors and people who can encourage you to develop your talents in the practical realm for pursuit of the good. But notice you need people to mentor you, coach you, guide you, help you, pass on wisdom to you in your field, in your area, in your talent. Get discipline. Discipline is doing the hard thing even when you don't want to. This takes uh, vision, focus on the good. So discipline for your life, and for your work, this is sometimes called a work ethic. Did your mom teach you? Did your dad teach you how to be diligent? So discipline, diligence, hard work. And uh, we aren't going to get the good and we aren't going to develop our talent apart from hard work and uh, a work ethic. So if you're young, hopefully you have this already, but if you don't, you can start practicing now, the next part, I mentioned once before, but simplicity, a simple life, a, what do we call it? Minimalism. Some people are really into this right now. Simplicity and contentment. So uh, we talked about suffering and contentment. So if we know the good, we should be content, practice contentment, and we shouldn't need a lot of stuff. We shouldn't need to fill our life with consuming so there's an application here for our finances and the good. Uh, do we uh, purchase for the good? Do we spend our money for the good? And this takes discipline too. Do I need this or do I want this? And why do I want this? Is this going to contribute to the good? Do I think this is the good? So simplicity and uh, 
this might be something we need to start practicing when you're young, but I think it comes in when you're older too. Uh, I noticed this in my life maybe about five years ago that I had a lot of clutter and I was accumulating stuff and the stuff was distracting me. Um, and the stuff was, I don't know, I didn't need it. So I had to go, okay, I have purpose and a job to do and the stuff can't hold me back from that. And I need to sort of simplify my life so that I can pursue this goal without distraction. So it may be uh, something that, I don't know, creeps up on you and you go, wow, I've got a lot of junk here. I need to simplify my life. And I've accumulated all this stuff I have to do, 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 do. I need to simplify my life. Um, I'm just checking the time here. Uh, all right, so simplicity is a virtue and contentment in the good. What about solitude and elimination of distraction? This might have to do with time management and our use of technology. Um, solitude is necessary for thinking, alone time, quiet alone time. Uh, I go crazy if I don't have solitude. I need, sometimes the only solitude I have is my morning drive to work and home. Um, I, I have to go to a quiet place. I have a porch and I go sit on my porch with Kino. He comes with me and we uh, listen to birds and think. So solitude is a virtue. It's a discipline and it's uh, quiet time, alone time. And the purpose of it is to eliminate distractions so you can think. Um, pursuing the good is going to require a lot of thinking. So uh, how much time do we spend with technology and screen time? So you might need to manage your time in pursuit of the good. You might need to manage your screen time and the use of technology. Sometimes we use technology to distract us, to zone out. I get that, but maybe limit it. Say, I'm only going to zone out for an hour or I'm going to zone out for half an hour and uh, learn to be alone, learn to be content. Learn to think your own thoughts. Okay, the next one is study and learning. These are disciplines we need to pursue the good. Study and learning. And there's so much you could do here. Um, we need to get the foundations, the basics in place. And when we're studying, we need to learn how to take notes. Do you take good notes? I hope you do at the end of this class. Uh, do you know how to read? Often my students tell me they don't enjoy reading and they don't enjoy it because they don't know how to read. Not that they can't read the words on the page, but complex ideas and paragraphs, ideas linked together logically. So it's a discipline. You have to learn to read. Uh, there's a book by Mortimer Adler called How to Read a Book. And he admits, look, we don't know how to read because we weren't trained. And uh, it's a discipline. So learn to read. I'm happy to help you if you want a mentor. And learn to think presuppositionally. Learn to think what is more basic, what is less basic. What's the order to thinking? So studying and learning, there's an order. There's a discipline to paying attention, to taking notes, to reading, and to annotating the things that we read. If you're going to pursue the good and you're going to be engaging in this kind of discipline, you also need to learn how to relax and refresh. Oftentimes we go into amusement, which is unthinking. We need not amusement, but we need uh, recreation, recreation. We need to be renewed. And so that might mean doing things other than, you know, intense thinking. Maybe you go hiking. Maybe you go play a sport. Maybe, I don't know what people do to relax. I take walks. I take the dogs for a walk twice a day. And sometimes I just cruise around on the internet, read different things, try to have different uh, input than just philosophy. Talk to my friends, hang out with other people. But we do need rest. Sometimes we have to work to rest right? 
It's a discipline. Uh, we need to discipline the body. This is a reality. Uh, we need to think about health and wellness. We need to think about self-care in this area, mental health, physical health, um, things like going to bed at a good time, waking up at a good time, getting out into the sun, exercising, eating right. It's a kind of discipline. This is a whole area of discipline, right? And if we get this wrong, it will affect everything else because if your body's messed up, natural evil is going to distract you. Um, you can still seek the good if you have, you know, health issues, but health is really important. And the next one, a discipline, working with others. Ah, you can't pursue the good alone. It's a human project, so we need to learn coordination and cooperation. Coordinating with other people, cooperating with other people. This might include networking. Uh, I want to do this in, in uh, pursuing the good. I need to know who else is doing it so I could learn from them. Get a mentor. Uh, or maybe I want to go into this field. Who do I know? So there is a, a, a working with others that is important for the good. And we need to learn how to work with others even when they have difficult personalities sometimes. So um, I certainly work with a lot of other people in a lot of different contexts. It's, it's discipline. It's, it's hard, but we need it. All right. Now the next point is that there are times and seasons of life and we need to know them and be in those times and seasons of life. Sometimes it doesn't always work out. For example, my mom said I'm a, I was a late starter. Um, I really didn't start my career until I was in my 30s. And it was because I was behind a bit in my studies. I didn't know what I wanted to do, but the times and seasons of life. So when you're a child, you should be in the grammar stage of things. You're learning the basics. You're learning grammar. When you're a teenager, you're in the dialectic stage. You're learning how to dialogue. You're learning how to reason and argue. And when you're, uh, let's say, high school or college student, you're in the rhetoric stage. You're learning how to express yourself. You're learning how to express yourself well. Now, we didn't all get this kind of uh, stage development in our education, but we could recognize this is true in terms of seasons of life, but it's also true in learning a new discipline. There's the grammar level, the dialectical level, the rhetorical level. And uh, times and seasons of life also includes things like there's a time to be a student and to learn what you need to learn as a student, the basics. And uh, there's a time to be an adult. And adulting has different levels too. Like there's a time to start your household and get your household going. And there's a time to serve your community in a broader way beyond your household. And there's a time to be an elder and give advice and pass on wisdom to young people. So think about that, times and seasons of life and uh, the discipline that is involved in each season of life. Then there's knowing the times in which we live. I don't know. I feel like every day I go, wow, we're living in interesting times. And then I go, wow, we're living in such crazy weird times. And I'm not sure I love it or I'm super uncomfortable by it, but it is what it is. So we need to know the times in which we live. And right now, these are the things we need to learn. Flexibility. I mean, right now, everything is up in the air. We need to be flexible. We need to learn self-sufficiency. Uh, I think a lot of people are learning that now. Uh, rapid change. We need to learn how to adjust and, and deal with rapid change. And lifelong learning. How can I continue my education beyond school? And what is it that my age, my era, my generation needs? Okay, and then the next thing is how can we learn excellence in all things? This is virtue. And all things is not just in my life, but in my social interactions. There's something called social virtuosity. 
Can I be an excellent human being in all circumstances? Excuse me, I need a sip. And lastly, do you know how to suffer well? We talked about suffering in the last moral law, but this takes work too. Intentionality. Do I know how to suffer? Do I know how to let natural evil work in my life to bring me to a deepened understanding of the good? All of this requires discipline and order in our life so that we could pursue the good, know the good, pass it on. Now, I think I'm going to pause here. There's one more thing I want to talk about, and that's unity and the good. And I think I'll wrap this one up and talk about that next time. So what we talked about this time was ordering your life in pursuit of the good. Your whole life. All right. Take care for now.